Welcome back to PLOS Politics. The Federal Capital Territory uh, FCT High Court in Apo, Abuja, has sentenced a former federal lawmaker, Farouk Lawan, to seven years imprisonment for taking bribes of $500,000 from uh, businessman Femi Otedela, a billionaire oil magnate, while serving as the chairman of the defunct House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee investigating the fraud around the fall subsidy regime in 2012. Angela Otaluka, the trial judge, found the former legislator guilty of all three counts of bribery. Our subject of conversation is not really on the jailed lawmaker, but how long the trial process took, nine years. The court has dismissed uh, Lawan's uh, preliminary objection against the trial that spanned a whole of nine years. Joining us to discuss uh, this is uh, Mr. Samuel Apologun and uh, Emeka Opara, both legal practitioners. Thank you very much for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you very much. All right, I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Opara. Um, nine years to get a seven-year conviction. Tell us what you think about this. Is this, well, eventually uh, justice was served and so it shouldn't be a problem. Well, I, I, I think we have a problem uh, about um, that in Nigeria. Uh, it's something we really have to work on. It has even improved slightly uh, from what it was before. Uh, before, well, because of the nature of the case and the uh, personality involved, uh, we could be thinking of maybe about 15, 14 years um, or thereabouts uh, that, that the trial could have taken place. And um, uh, within that period, the prosecution could have uh, got tired and uh, the case could have been uh, frustrated. There has been an improvement in the, in the last few years uh, because uh, many judges have uh, started putting their feet down. Um, but we need to do more. Um, I, I believe uh, in the course of, uh, of, of uh, this conversation, we should be able to propose solutions. We should be able to talk about what are the causes um, of uh, such long-drawn trials? What causes it in our system? But uh, to answer your question directly, I think it is a problem. It is not a good thing. And it doesn't speak well of us. It doesn't ensure uh, uh, justice in Nigeria. Okay, so you can go ahead. Before I move to Mr. Apolo, Apolo Gun, uh, go ahead and share with us you know, what you think um, are the major causes of, uh, of uh, situations like this, that a case, a trial can last for nine years um, in our system? Yeah, I, um, I think it, it has to do, um, number one, uh, the prosecution, uh, the lawyers in Nigeria, and the courts, the judges. Each has blame to share from this uh, kind of scenario. Now, um, you find out that many prosecutions are done shortly. Um, before you come to the level of the prosecution, there is the investigation. And that is where the problem starts. In fact, if uh, the judges, the courts, you play exactly by the rules, I think most criminals, about 90% of criminals, about 90% of defendants, that's what we call them now, uh, no longer accused, about 90% of them will go free, despite the fact that they actually committed uh, the uh, offense, offenses charged. Because uh, the police and uh, the other investigation agencies do not do their jobs well. Uh, they compromise, they do jobs shoddily, and you see the... Uh, the, the attitude of Nigerians to public office is not my father's work, so you don't do it properly and all that. That is one. Now, when we move to the prosecution, the prosecution, in many instances, they are compromised. There is an enormous pressure from defendants, especially high-caliber defendants, to compromise uh, the, every case that uh, they, uh, they are involved in. And they start from the investigation, they get to the prosecution, and you see a prosecution um, uh, lawyer coming to, um, to, to, to ask for adjournment, to delay. But I, I can say something, that the EFTC, they have uh, been making more efforts 
uh, in that direction better than the police, better than some other agencies. Now, when you come to the defense, the defense lawyers, that's where the major problem is. Now, if you go overseas to in many jurisdictions, you can see a lawyer in handling more than two or three cases in one month or in two months. You, you come to meet a lawyer and he says, my, my, my diary is full for the next six months. I have two, three cases that two, three trials I'm going to conduct. I won't be able to conduct this case properly if I take it from you. And you have to go to meet another lawyer. But here you find out that the lawyers, all the lawyers, a lawyer could have 30 trials or 20 trials in one month, in one month, and have more than 60 cases, 30 cases in one month with uh, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, complex applications and all that, that he has to go and do research on. And, and the result is that he will not do them properly. He will not do them properly. Now, if you go to the root of it, it's because legal services are not properly remunerated. And so the lawyers, what they do is that they get as many as possible to be able to uh, break it. All right. That is, that is one of the causes of the, of the problems we have. Okay, hold on. When, the lawyers are, um, when they are properly remunerated, you will find out that many lawyers will start dropping some of the extra baggage. Which All right, is what hold I on, Mr. Opara. All right, hold on. I, I want to bring in Samuel Lakbologun. Uh, he's also a legal practitioner. Um, I'm sure that you've also experienced, uh, you know, situations like this before. Maybe also have been, you know, um, um, uh, a part of trials that have lost, lasted a lot longer than uh, they should. Um, there is the Ad Administration of a Criminal Justice Act that was expected to at least fix some of all these issues. Um, where would you say that, um, you know, attention needs to be put immediately in order for us to have trials last maximum of one year and, you know, it's uh, concluded. Thank you very much. I'm very glad um, to be here. And then I'm grateful for that question. In fact, that was what I was going to speak to, um, proceeding from the premise that was um, raised by my learned colleague. Um, firstly, this issue of um, delay in prosecution has been the bane of um, administration of criminal justice in Nigeria. It is one of the reasons why the, um, the, the law seems to more of um, overlook or many criminals tend to escape the dragnet of the, of the court, of the law, and then um, the, some innocent persons suffer. So this is the reason why the ACJA, that is the yes. Administration of Criminal Justice Act, was promulgated. The Administration of Criminal Justice Act actually um, was a, a copy, so to speak, uh, and the development on the Lagos State Administration of Criminal Justice Law. And um, you will notice that the Administration of Criminal Justice Law of Lagos State, though came out in 2011, initially 2007, and thereafter um, was, um, uh, you know, uh, was updated in 2011, but the SCJA came into force in 2015. And you will notice that this Lawal Farouk case started in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. And so um, as at then, as at when the Lawal Farouk case was, uh, commenced, the law that was, um, ad was uh, in charge of administration of criminal justice in Nigeria was the especially in Abuja and the northern part of Nigeria, was the Criminal Procedure um, Act. Oh. I mean, criminal Procedure Code, I mean to say. And so that was... And there were lacunas in those laws. And those were the things that defense lawyers would want to explore. Of course, if your case is bad as a defense counsel, one of the first things you want to do is to buy time for your, um, for your client. It is natural with human beings to do what they can do to either um, to either avoid 
the doomsday or to postpone the doomsday. And that is what many trial lawyers have done, what many trial lawyers have tried to do. And that actually is why the criminal justice, uh, the Administration of Criminal Justice uh, Act was promulgated in 2015. And the major purpose for the promulgation or for the enactment of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, one of the main purposes I mean to say, is to deliver speedy administration of criminal justice and also to ensure that uh, the rights of individuals are not breached in the process of the administration of criminal justice. Now, there are many things, there are many innovative provisions of the ACJA. Now, this underscores the, admin, the innovative provisions of the ACJA. There are many of them which would have um, further increased the speed of the, of the uh, conduct of this particular case if the judge, I mean the court, and for that matter, the, um, the, the stakeholders have put those things into consideration. For example, That's if you notice that in 2000, and um, I think in 2017 or thereabout, the uh, Farouk uh, Council, I think that was uh, Chief Dr. Michael Zekome, uh, uh, appealed over a procedural matter. He raised a, a what you call um, a no case submission and then the judge dismissed it, then appealed to the Court of Appeal, and that lasted for another more than a year before the, the Court of Appeal directed that the case should be brought back, that, the, that uh, Farouk Lawal had um, a, 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 something to answer, had the case to answer. Then the case was directed back to the, uh, to the High Court. And I mean, if, if the Prosecution Council was, uh, was among... You know, Fix his mind on what is the provision of the ACJA. One of the provisions is that there would not be stay of, uh, stay of prosecution while an appeal, especially a procedural appeal, has been entered in a criminal trial. That is to say, even if you are appealing to the court of appeal, we will continue with our case in the in the high court. Right. So, 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 it, so, in uh, summary. Um, Mr. Akpologo, I think in summary, you, you are basically saying that it's a failure to implement the Administration of Criminal yeah, Justice I mean, Act um, yeah, on because both sides. One of the arguments that lawyers will bring is that uh, laws don't uh, uh, operate in retrospect, but procedural laws operate in retrospect. All right. Once the law, uh, Administration of Criminal Justice law come, came into being, it's a, it, it had on procedure, and these provisions should have um, been applied in as much as the right. procedure is... The okay, um, in 30 seconds, uh, Emeka Opara, I want to, you know, have you wrap up. Um, we're in 2021, we have seen these things uh, play out over and over and over, and you've said that it has actually improved. Is there a way to enforce the Administration of Criminal Justice Act? And that is from the CJN to the Minister of Justice to the Nigerian Bar Association and every player involved. Is there a way that the uh, Administration of Crim Criminal Justice Act can be enforced um, to ensure that we have shorter trials? Well, I, I think that the courts are uh, making efforts now to enforce. But like I said, uh, the major part of the problem we have in the enforcement is, is still the issue of our attitudinal problems, our attitude to things, our appearances, how the courts, the, uh, the defense counsel, when they come and for flimsy reasons, they ask for adjournment. Sometimes, most times, they are not ready. Uh, they explore every uh, avenue to delay the matter. So this, and also the, the matter I mentioned about lawyers having too many matters uh, on their plate and not able to, therefore, conduct matters properly and efficiently. So yes. this is where the NBA has to come in. The MBA has to, over the years, the MBA has uh, lost, uh, I would say, a lot of its relevance to, uh, to making sure that lawyers do the right thing and that lawyers are properly, properly All right. remunerated. All right, Mr. Alfara. So the MBA has to do something about that seriously. Together okay. with the bench, the courts, and um, so there has to be a review, a review. And they actually, uh, some of these the offenses that we see now, for example, this one now, uh, a lot of people will say that um, seven years uh, is uh, very little for this kind of offense. Uh, it is the maximum that is in the book. So all those things ought to be reduced.
I'm so a cop para. Thank you very much. Substantive and procedural law. Okay. Obviously, there's a lot of people or a lot of um, factors that need to come into play in order to um, uh, have a better criminal justice system and, of course, a criminal justice uh, uh, process generally for Nigeria. Um, but it's a continued conversation. You've already spoken about the role the NBA needs to play, and we hope that they are listening. We hope that Olumide Akpata also um, understands uh, the, his relevance and the relevance of his body at a time like this. Thank you very much, uh, Emeka Opara, for joining us and for sharing your time with us. And uh, Mr. Samuel Akpologun, thank you also for, of course, the brief conversation that we had. I truly appreciate it. Okay. Um, Ms. Akologo, um, I think you want to quickly say something? Let me quickly say something. Actually, the ahead. law, the Criminal Justice Act, has also made provisions for the implementation of itself. Section 469 to Section 476 of the ACJA provides for what they call the ACGMC, that is the Administration of Criminal Justice Monitoring Committee. So there is a committee for monitoring the implementation of the provisions of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. And I think if the government will strengthen the committee, make provisions, and then make them not just a paper tiger or a dog, but yeah. actually give um, the power to the implementation of same, I believe the court of, and really actually courts are already sitting up. I, I mentored court sitting uh, for Clean Foundation for a time, and I, and I noticed that they have been increased in adherence to the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. However, I think the ACJMC should be strengthened to do its work. If the ACJMC was alive to its work, many of these things will be done in, on time. Okay, and of course, uh, we hope that we also get to see more convictions and um, a, a, a smoother process. Thank you once again, Mr. Akpologun, for joining us. Looking forward to speaking with you again. All right, and thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. There is a popular saying that justice delayed is justice denied. The years that go by in the wait for justice, caused mostly by the slow, grinding gears of the Nigerian criminal justice system, the lack of full implementation, like we just mentioned, of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, and other clogs in the wheel of justice, from striking judiciary workers to avoidable adjournments and to also poor investigation. Some may say a seven-year prison sentence after nine years of a, a trial is still better than nothing, but can you imagine how many victims of a corrupt system will not get to see perpetrators punished if we have to wait for nine years each time uh, for a conviction? It is important that all these factors and numerous others are corrected if Nigeria is truly serious about fighting corruption and punishing corrupt government officials for, uh, uh, for their crimes. For too long, we have allowed these lapses to almost seem like a, a reward for corrupt practices and the war against corruption cannot be won this way. Thank you very much for joining us on Plus Politics this evening. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. <laughs>